Hey, everybody, welcome back to the Spinner. I'm here with the boys, PD and Cal. Say what's up, guys. Yo. Ready to rock, people. Here we're talking Ava DuVernay. There are two projects coming up here for DC and DC fandom. One is DMZ. It's a miniseries starring, I believe, Rosario Dawson. It's about like an alternate history type of thing. We'll go, we'll listen more to that. And also, we're going to be talking about Naomi. So, hey, let's watch it. Select a play. <laughs> DC Fandom is the only place to be for the latest and the greatest DC news and upcoming projects. I am Terry LTAM, and to say I'm thrilled to be here with the best fans in the world is a complete understatement. This is beyond exciting. Now, up next, another first. The talented and revolutionary writer, director, and producer, Eva DuVernay, is officially making her first show at HBO Max. Eva has joined force with writer Roberto Patino to bring you DMZ, based on the comic of the same name. The show takes place in the future, where America is caught up in the Second Civil War, leaving Manhattan in ruins. The resilience of community and the human spirit is really what stands out in this four-part limited series starring Rosario Dawson and Jad and Brad. Now, over to Eva and Roberto to hear more. Hi, I'm Ava DuVernay. I'm Roberto Patino. And we're here today to talk about our hot new DC comic adaptation, DMZ. It's a story about a fractured people that are coming together where we have a story <laughs> in America and the United States of America. And our story takes place eight years into that DMZ where the rule of law is basically dictated by the most powerful person at any point in time. And that the could Duke change of New York. So you have people who are in one. the city who've basically been abandoned. And the big kind of thrust of the story is an outsider comes in and she turns everything upside down Snake and that roller coaster ride that adventure is one of the things that i love most about your script and one of the reasons why i had to direct it, it had to be involved let's talk a little bit about rosario dawson and the character of alma alma was inspired by one of the most fascinating characters in the comic book and also one of the most underserved characters in the comic book named z who is this fearless medic i really took the creative guardrails off and dove into the spirit of Z and reinvented her. You know, this show is a bit of an origin story for one of the best characters in the graphic novel. She comes out the other side with a whole new understanding of what her place in this world ought to be. I mean, the thing is like a beautiful, chaotic, messy, grappling with gender and who can do what and what power looks like and who really has the power. This is exemplified through Parco, played by Benjamin Bratt, and Wilson, played by Hunley. And these are two actors, Roberto, they came to play. Man, Parco Delgado is this guy who said, you know what, I am the law. I am the power here. And who I am and what I say I am, no one's gonna challenge me on that if I say with enough resolve. Wilson, on the other hand, is about the opposite side of that, where everybody gets to make truly free choices in the DMZ. They get to decide who they want to be. And the result of that is this patchwork of gangs and tribes and outfits. And Wilson sees that as a marvel. Because that's what the DMZ is. It is set in a world that's just a few moments into the future. And it speculates what would we be if we let the worst of our divisions get to us. I just think it's super cool. It's also important in ways that allow us to consider ourselves now and what we want to be going forward. We're just pleased and proud that it's going to be uh, making its way to HBO Max. And, you know, it's just been a pleasure working with you, my friend. I can't wait to do it again and again. Indeed. It's been such a pleasure working with you, too. And I honestly cannot wait for the world to see DMZ. It's a world I'm, I'm thrilled to, to share, share with audiences uh, and especially with the DC fans. Same here. Well, thank you to uh, DC for having us and we'll see you on HBO Max very soon. DMZ. All right, watch you guys. Hold on, let's make sure there's nothing else in this one, but 
Stop talking. Yeah, you can. But yeah, I mean, I think this is pretty interesting. I always like these alternate dystopian futures. Well, it's not really dystopian, but alternate histories where you have this battle between different sections of society, you know. Um, so it, it, it's something that's been very popular going on, and especially Rosaria Dawson um, headlining this, the, the Bernie being the director behind it. Yo, I think it seems this may be a hit for HBO Max. What do you think about this, Cal? I don't know. I think I've seen this already. Wasn't this called Z Nation? I know a lot of people didn't watch that show. So. Oh, oh, oh! I got it. It was that other show, Allegiant. No. But it was um, uh, Escape from New York. <laughs> yeah. But... Oh yeah, that was great. This is the sequel. <laughs> no, that's Escape from LA. That's a different. That's a sequel. No, there's Escape from New York. You just uh, you don't remember. You just you gave up on you. You remember Escape from LA more than Escape from New York. Wait, oh wait, hold on. Wait, was it uh? No, 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 no. I'm wrong. I'm wrong. This was uh, Why the Last Man? It's playing on Hulu right now, right? Wow. No, that's a completely different thing. And we saw that at the the, the 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 con. No, that's a whole different thing. That's oh, the no. Last Man, not the last. I, I don't know. Why does this seem so familiar? It feels like I've seen this a few times. I think well, I, I think saw one. Seen, wait a minute. I got it. I got it. I got it. Planet of the Apes. <laughs> No, well, it, it feels like, I mean, looking at what we're going to go into next in the same video with Naomi, it just feels like they took everything that she was planning to do at the DC Universe and they called it down in Ava to say into these two projects. So it's like, all right, we don't want to lose you. We just don't want to do this stuff right now. We're putting that on the shelf. So um, you want to do some other stuff? Yeah. What do we got? So I'll do some of my stuff I want to do in the New Gods in this. So dark, apocalyptic future. Oh, no, it's not apocalyptic. <laughs> well, the point I'm making, you know, with, with all with, with all intended sarcasm is, OK, I, I pretty much have seen this scenario already. I've seen this scenario already. It was Walking Dead. You know, it was Z Nation. I've seen this. What is different about this one that is going to draw viewers in and it better not be that we have a female lead that better that better not be it you're gonna to have to do a lot more than that and, but you well said, i can't i can't i'm so sorry, sorry. I, I can't i can't i can't um take away from it for for it being apocalyptic because i mean when you have something that's working they're gonna do something similar so i, I can say they you know it's it's in hollywood's wheelhouse to do X amount of westerns during the same time. And superhero films. Superhero films. That's hey, the thing. Yeah. no problem with that. I understand what when I go to see Captain America, I understand that that's going to be a different film than Thor. Thor would be a different film than Iron Man. What's different about this one? Apocalyptic future. That's right. what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying as to this one. So what do you bring into the table? And whatever you bring into the table is going to have to be is yeah is going to have to be different than some of these other what's the draw well you know what the draw is going to be the character because there's no story because the story's already been done since it's apocalyptic future so we are going to be tuning in to see this particular character and however they react to situations so that's what this is all hinging on i mean they say the same thing about superhero films right it's basically the same thing people superhero buy, fights the bad guy bad guy fights it there's going to be some different nuances. It's just a different way of portraying the, the, the like Petey said. You have tons of Westerns, and people watch them. Some are more nuanced than others. Some are straight up shooting on our parts. It's OK. It's just another story, you know? I mean, I know you like the Bridgerton and, and, and that, that vein of stuff in Austin. They're all basically romances, right, when you call it. But when you who, look at it. Who are you talking to? Cal, we talking to you. Who else are we talking to? What are you talking about? What are you talking about Bridgerton for? Yeah, I'm just I saying. You know, I'm just, you know, my bad. I didn't no, know. no, yeah, yeah. I know what you're trying to do. Yeah, don't try. Don't, don't try to do that. Don't try to do that. Wow. You. But overall, it's still, it's still, it's still just a story, and the question is whether the story is going to get us. We didn't really go into a full um, um, commercial trailer of it. When we get the trailer, then we can start saying, yeah, well, this is something that we, we're interested in, something we're not. PD agrees with me right now. I'm just saying that it's a Rosario Dawson, a good chance that, um, you know, people will, you know, check it out. She was, uh, we wanted this to happen in the Marvel thing. Like, even though it would be like, yeah, like a night nurse thing where you could throw in some stuff, but now we're getting the uh, apocalypse, uh, uh, ap apocalyptic nurse, uh, you know, frontier, like the frontier doctor in the apocalypse. 
which is good point. Good point. Good point. I guess that's the angle they're going from the I guess the Western show Frontier Doctor or something like that. So yeah. it's an apocalypse yeah. thing. But I mean, you know, but that's basically, you know, it's still Hollywood because it's like, hey, she was like the medic in the Marvel shows. Let's put her. Let's do have her be the medic there. Like who 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 we get? Who's a good medic? And we can get some of them. We can get um, one of those chicks from uh, what's her name? Grey's Anatomy. No, Ros- Rosario. She was a superhero doctor. Yes. Let's yeah, and yo, they got Benjamin Bratt, bro. What do you say? <laughs> that team is classic, bro. You know what I'm trying to say? He's done everything. He's been in Marvel, everywhere. He's the man, bro. All right. Then the cat. He was in Catwoman. Yes. He was in Catwoman? Yes, he was in Catwoman. Well, hey, if you say so, it is so. All right? I'm not going to deny it. All right, we're going to keep this ball rolling. You ready for the next project? It is Naomi. You sure you want to do that together or you want to do that separate? Separate from who? No. So this is the next project that's coming up for Ava DuVernay, and it is Naomi from that fabulous Bendis comic book run that came out. Um, which was one of the top selling comics at one point, right, Cal? Uh, no. <laughs> but let's let's just roll it. <laughs> so let's put it on. Let's take a look at it. Select a comic of the same name from writers Brian Michael Bendis, David Walker, and artist Jamal Campbell. Naomi stars this incredible actress, Casey Walfall. Hi, Casey. Great to see you. Hi, Candice. It's so great to be here. Everyone is so jazzed for Naomi, and I am loving the diversity that's become the norm in the DC universe. How does it feel to be a part of the DC family? It's an honor to be a part of the DC family. I, for so long, have watched shows like The Flash and a bunch of other DC TV and movies, so it's really special to me and very full circle for me. And everyone who I've talked to within the DC universe has been incredibly welcoming, which makes me really happy and has been it's been so exciting. I'm really excited for people to see this character that is so special to them within the comics on TV. And since she's so fairly new to the DC universe, there's a lot of room to grow within the character and within the story. And it's something that we haven't seen yet within the DC universe. How did you prepare for the role of a teenage superhero? Preparing for the role of a teenage superhero isn't so hard for me because I started the show when I was 16. Naomi is 16, I'm 17 now. So our lives, they often overlap as I'm reading the scripts. I get to pull from my family and my friends and things that I'm going through. And when you're a teenager, it's really crucial when you're figuring out your identity and who you are and what you like and what you don't like, which is a lot of what goes through Naomi's head throughout the story. It's a superhero show, but it's also a coming of age story. When it comes to the part of preparing for the superhero part, I can't relate to the supernatural part of the story, but I can relate to being a good person and doing good deeds, which is a huge part about being a superhero. And I've also read the comics. When I first booked the show, I got the series of the comics and I've also read the Justice Leagues that she's in. And I'm an avid reader, so getting into comics is something that the show has started me on. What makes Naomi different from the other female superheroes out there? Well, as I said before, she's a fairly new superhero, so there's a lot of room for growth. But honestly, she's a young female black teenage superhero, which is really special because that's something that we rarely see a character have their own comics and to have on TV. And I think what also sets her apart is her character and her heart. She's incredibly confident. She loves the people around her. She's incredibly driven, incredibly smart, and isn't afraid to show it. And although there are a lot of Naomi's and people like Naomi in real life, Those aren't always shown on TV, so I think it'll be really special. I also think what makes it different is the unique characters within the setting of the show. And the creatives in the team and the crew and the cast, they make it even more special, so I'm really excited for people to see the show. Thanks, Casey. Thanks so much for being here. Let's give the fans a little teaser of what's coming their way in this Disney News Flash, featuring Naomi. It's coming! Now, are we ready to begin? What's going on? Annabelle says there's a stunt happening in the square. Something to do with Superman. I need this for my site. Bathroom break. Ten minutes. I'll be right back. Oh, this is the most visual thing we've seen all day.
Interesting. Interesting. That, that's it. She yeah, skateboards and then she passes yeah. out. That's our intro. Yeah. After is all that, that talk, all is, that build up, just to see that. Oh, what a letdown! What hey. a letdown! Wow, Come on. he's Come really on. upset. It's a teaser. We saw. We barely saw a teaser in Shazam. Yeah, that's not a. That's not a teaser. That's a C teaser at the end of the day. That's the type of teaser that was. Come on. Come on. We get that build up. I mean, he, uh, Petey's right. That was like, okay, great. I thought it was a great scene right there. She's over here skateboarding through the school. Conveniently, nobody else is in the hall. She skateboarding through the school. She gets out and then she passes out. That's what we're left with. Oh, come on, people. You uh, come on, come on. You could have done better than that. I think you're being a little too hard, personally. I think that um, that it's a it's a good intro. We see what she looks like. Looks similar to the girl in the comics. Um, we also see that um, you know. She's communicating with a friend once again, um, and we see that where she's at it gives us a, a setup of where she's at. She's in high school, and she takes off. It's just a teaser, you know. Just see what it, what it's going to look like, get a feel for it. That's all it is, you know. Mm-hmm. Petey, what about the fact that she, Mars that she jumped the line? I don't know what she doesn't about. have that much time in the publication, and now we got a TV show of it. Something that. The DC guys could have made up on their own without using a Bendis character. Well, they had to use a Bendis character. That was in his contract. It's <laughs> <laughs> a new thing. TV show. You better use my characters. Is this or about else? Kill Me or is this about Bendis? Because those are two completely different things you want to talk about here, guys. You know, I'm what about say. him, ju- her, the line? If you want to go there right now, we can go there with the Bendis hating again. All right? I All said, right. What about okay. her jumping the line? We're going to be objective about Naomi. Answer the question. Okay, let's go there. I'm what about ready. her jumping the line? Not jumping to a character. Well, here, a, couple of, a couple of things, because, you know, they ask, well, what makes this character different from the other other characters? And the answer was nothing. Okay, this, this is not, this isn't, even, this isn't even the first black female character, superhero we've seen on the WB. We've got Batwoman. We had Thunder. We yeah, had boy, lightning. We got, boy, do we got Batwoman, and we definitely, good lord, do we have. We've um, had we've had two different versions of Vixen, okay. So we've had black female superheroes, and those are just the ones I can remember off the top of my head. So this is there's nothing new about this. Again, and this for me is an issue because all of these are character driven. They're all character driven. We're going to tune into this. Not because we're going to have some great stories to tell you, but we're going to hope you connect with this particular character that we're serving up for X, Y, Z reason. And there's not necessarily anything unique about this character that we're seeing right now. So we'll, we'll see how it we'll see how it all goes from there. But you know, I, I uh, the interview with Candace Patton. If I had to base it on that, I don't know. Eh, maybe I'll check this out. But I'm kind of you know, you got me in with the skateboarding. I was like, okay, that's cool. I want to see some more. Mm-hmm. And then you pass out. <laughs> like what is that what the show's gonna do you're gonna heighten my anticipation and, and then it's just gonna fizzle that's not good i don't know who decided that that was supposed to be the draw in oh tune in to see why she passed out no i don't care why she passed out come on come on no that's her getting the power it feels like it feels like bendis is also a big fan of um like kitty pride and the idea of kitty pride of having these sort of like but taking Kitty Pride, like where Chris Claremont did, and making her a genius, going into the, the almost Nancy Drew type of thing of having this person who's the young girl, who's like, um, I guess different from Alias, who's the, the the rough and tumble detective. Now we have a kid thing. I think it's still a little too close, even though this is more like a, a brighter show than the Alias. You know the co- a bright, brighter comic, the character than Ali- Alias, but it seems to be a little close to that. So I was kind of, it was kind of, kind of weird that they would go to DC, and then next thing you know, this is kind of a, um, you know, I guess this is kind of, this is more than the Image guys do breaking the work for hire thing, where somehow he's been being able to make money off of these things. He probably got a, a decent deal on it, so. I mean, I don't know. It looks okay. I mean, we watched the, you know, like the act, actress looks decent. But um, you know, this is the moment where she, I guess, she gets whatever power she has because in the comic it looks like she has some sort of energy powers. Um, you know, so I guess this is the moment, but we don't know what the incident is that caused this. But then Superman's too busy to stop off and help her while she's on the floor. She's like, nah, okay. I, I can get this cat. I'll help this cat out the tree, but that that babe down on the floor. 
You're gonna have to stay there. Ooh, I could make such helps. a joke. I could make such a joke right now, but I won't do it. Oh, no. Look, it's the, the the point of the matter is, is that look, Naomi is a character that they're finding because she's a younger character. They're hoping for her to connect with other younger um, readers, you know, um, watchers, or some TV TV viewers. And so it's clearly that's one of the reasons, quote unquote, she may have jumped the the, the gun. They found a character. The Vixen character is a bit older. You know, Batwoman is a, a bit older, and that makes a lot of sense. So I don't see anything negative in and of itself. If quote unquote, um, quote unquote, do Barbara Gordon as freaking Nancy Drew, quote unquote, do well, that. They, they didn't. I'm just saying they do chose. that. And they then next thing you know, you can do her as Batgirl. So they come in the Batgirl. Was a character by one of the top comic book writers in the country right now, and oh. they put her in there. Who? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Who are you talking about? Who are you talking about? You know, a guy would approve. Oh. I wish I did that one, the, the great one. <laughs> now I will say who, okay? We don't say who, who, okay? So, you know, I think that it only makes a lot of sense. I think the, the great thing is that she she's somebody who's gonna definitely connect with that particular type of uh, demographic. And that's what DC, um, CW- Demographic? Doing. What demographic? I'm trying to say young girls who cut into the Marvel Universe. You, you, if you go to CW, a lot of their shows are, are geared towards- um, But like Nancy Drew? Is Nancy Drew on the CW? Yes, it is. I mean, yes. what are we watching this for? It's got Nancy Drew with powers. Come on. What do you got next? I'm, I'm doing the cow now. What do you got next? I'm the, I'm the producer of the show. Give me another character, another DC character. Uh, there's there. Let, I mean, let, we, got, we got Flash. We got we got Legends of the uh, Legends of Tomorrow. There's a lot. Okay. Of this is pretty easy. We got a Bendis character. Bendis had something contractual. All right. These guys are going for what they believe is the low hanging fruit. She's female. She's black. Okay, we should definitely get some people in. We should definitely get some people in for that. Hey, well, why the? Oh no, we're gonna have a black director. She's a woman too, so we, we're checking all these boxes at the end of the day. And hopefully, when they come in, they'll actually tune in, and it'll be and it'll be cool. And you know what? It might actually be cool. You might get something in the vein of Star Girl over here, where you're like, okay, great. These are some really good stories. You know, I'm entertained. You know, I can actually come in with it. But that's not the. That is not okay. How this thing got. That's not the gestation for this right over here. There were some contracts. There's some checking boxes because we know what the demographics are that we need to hit for this particular network. And there you are. So wait, that wait, being wait, said, wait. hopefully everything works out. Wait, 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 wait. Let's 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 call this out because they did the same thing when they did Star Girl. They got the young girl, right? They wanted a younger demographic. They got her there. We got a, a famous author, another top name author, and Jeff Johns. And right. right. So this time you said the name. You didn't leave it up to someone to answer it. Very. So very smart on that one. <laughs> the point of the matter is, how different is that? You're just trying to you're, you're trying to parse. Uh, you're trying to spit the spit the pea because you know because she is because her name is Naomi McDuffie and she's being named after McDuffie from Milestone Comics. Is that it? You know, as a homage to him? No, it's not. Uh, man, you went there with it. That, man, that was that, that was far with it. Come you on. went that far. You went that far, and it still doesn't work. So all I'm just trying to say, you guys are splitting hairs for nothing, okay? So once again, we agree. We need that um, the casting is okay. Not sure why they picked this, but hey, you know, see how it goes. You're not sure why they pick half the shows they pick, right? No, we saw the people, they, they did Arrow because they haven't done Arrow, but they said, hey, they're doing Arrow, but they're doing it as Batman. And then when they threw in Flash, you're like, oh, sweat, Flash, buzz, big buzz. Flash got a show. Then they're like, hey, it's time to do more shows. They started doing more shows. That's the simple thing. They kept going visual, visual, Supergirl, Black Lightning, that sort of thing. We got some other characters. Some other, wait a second, some female Black characters that had powers? Oh, that's never been done. No, now we got it first done with Naomi, right? We did. Well, no, they had, they had, um, uh, um, um, what do you call it? The electric guy, what's the name? Um... I'm static shock. Uh, black lightning. This is black lightning. Yeah, black two lightning. Black females with two black superheroes in there. You had thunder and lightning on black lightning, in addition to a couple of other black hey. female superheroes that were on black lightning, in addition to some other ones who appeared before that. Okay, but they chose this one, okay? Again, because probably it's. Oh, you got an answer for everything. For, for, for Bendis. That's all I got to say. All right. So, yo, Bendis, keep up the good work, bro. You're gonna be the next Jeff Johns, the CW. 
There's nothing else. No further uh, uh, mud throwing. It's going to be the not not in his contract is too much. They they no, we got I got some mud to throw on that contract. So I got some said, mud to throw, but we're going to save that for Superman. You keep saying I keep I, I got to keep saying something, and he says something, and you don't say nothing. Come on, man. What? What, but, what are you saying? I'm not fair about. No. You, uh, you last time I checked. Say, last time I checked. You're sitting on the Iron Throne, right? We'll defend it. Okay, this is the Game of Thrones, baby. Either you win or you die. What you got? Stop complaining. Defend your throne. I'm defending it, baby. You know what I'm trying to say? And that's why Bendis, who you guys hate, got his own show now on CW. And this is going to be the first of many. All right? God. Wait a second. No, no, I don't want to end this. Song. No, I'm going to end this right now. Did you like the comic book, Naomi? I liked the... the <laughs> No, see, you asked the wrong question. Uh, did the you, read, run did you issue. read the comic book, Naomi? <laughs> he was. He did read it. He did read it. And was like, tell me the truth of, of the most recent one that you read. What did you feel about it? I read the whole run, so I, I thought it was pretty decent. It wasn't like spectacular, but I thought that the, when he when she revealed who she was, I thought that was great. Uh, I definitely liked that. You know, found out more about her world and the whole. Mm. I'm not out of you. All right, there we go. You're gonna go with that. That's what it is. You said it was a uh, great <laughs> spinner rack. Yes, spinner rack out. out.